the idea comes from Fyodor Susarchuk, and uh, he's uh, my partner in creating this studio. He uh, created the world where the game takes place. Actually, it's based on kind of a lot of previous games, uh, like board tabletop games and uh, live action games that he created. Uh, so he wanted to try and uh, turn it into a computer game, but also uh, more than anything, he wanted us to start making our own uh, indie titles because previously we were just mostly do contract work, like doing educational games and such. I wanted to try something different and something that would be only our own creative impulse. We took this as a kind of foundation. It was kind of interesting experience because I, I didn't invent the world. It was my job to make it all uh, work together and uh, to manage the team and to direct the whole process. It took us two and a half years. So we started with just a smaller team and not everyone was kind of fully worked full time on the project. We grew as we went along with it and uh, we, we became kind of stable team of eight in, in about a year and a half into the production. We actually are from the same city, almost all of us. Only one person is in Moscow. Oh, I'm so glad that you're impressed because it started like we have so few resources. How we can possibly make such an epic story? Because we, we wanted to make a game about the, this one's whole life, right? And uh, all we have is basically text and not much else. Uh, so at first we figured that, that would be like very small condensed scenes. So we could put a lot of them uh, in the game. But as we went on, we kind of felt that this is not the right way. So the game called for more epic approach in every department, so to speak. So scenes got bigger and they started to look like, like it looks uh, right now. So more like a big interactive novel, right? Not, not in a sense like visual novel, but like real novel, or, um, but where you have interactive scenes. I think this is an undeniable influence uh, because the creator of the original concept, Fyodor, he has a background in history, me as well, by the way. So he saw the French Revolution as a basis for the conflict that uh, would be in, in the story. The conflict between the old ways of nobility and clergy and the kind of the new way of uh, bourgeoisie. What if it would be not only a social issue, but also a kind of religious issue as well? And because in our game, of course, this, there's a system of lots where you have specific requirements that uh, some things that gods actually require from you. So we kind of took French Revolution and other similar industrial revolutions uh, as a basis and then uh, kind of investigated how it will work in, in this very uh, religious world. We made this game primarily and with uh, Russian players in mind, because actually we just couldn't fight it, because we tried to make a game that will be really kind of personal for us, so it would be inevitably rooted in uh, actually in Russian culture and uh, things like Russian literature and even Russian politics, current politics or, you know, history. But uh, of course we didn't want it to be like on the surface and so we have this fantasy setting which is influenced, stylized as uh, it has a lot of French names and such. We actually were interested in how is the game perceived in other <laughs> countries, other parts of the world, because we have a lot of uh, feedback and comments from Russian players. But uh, the most interesting is to learn how, for example, you as a French person can see it and how, which, which references are lost maybe in translation, which are not. <laughs> We definitely 
didn't want it to be like a specific message because we don't have any and we just tried to create a kind of space uh, like a story space and of course we put a lot of our thoughts and uh, ideas into it but we always tried not to be intrusive create enough space for every player to make uh, their own choice and uh, what we like most this multi polarity of this game and like how different people can get completely different things out like for example someone is exactly the same character but different players seeing him or her in completely different light so someone says well this is the best character in the game i love him so much and uh, are you kidding me he he's a moron <laughs> something like that but uh it's it all depends on, on your perspective that you bring with uh, with you into the game and was quite amazing for me personally because it's like you no know, just text game <laughs> right so it's all just words on page it kind of works as a piece of literature i think so yeah we tried to make of course, try to create some, to raise some interesting questions, political questions, obviously, and uh, historical questions, I think, like how history is made and uh, what kind of history one should be making, which life you have to lead in order to be able to influence things. Yeah, exactly. This is kind of the issue with the game because some players are just hated like hate the fact they can't make a choice they think they should be making this being consequences of your previous choices so we wanted to make a truly non-linear game and the only way to do it is to restrict player in some way right because otherwise it would be just it would mean nothing because your previous choices they didn't influence anything because uh, in order to be able to do something you also well, we have to take away some options from you as well right and uh, then uh, this is how you see that you are not all powerful so you just have to deal with the consequences of your previous actions could only hope that it would work in that way as well. Well, it's, uh, of course, uh, the purpose of, I think, any art. And, uh, well, we just were very clear about, like, we want the game to mean something, not just the outcome of the game. Like, this journey has to mean something not only for the, the characters, but for the player themselves. So it, it meant something. And, uh, of course, it wasn't you, but it, it was someone who you identified with closely for the story. So we're very glad to hear that it can actually work. This is something we really wanted to achieve because it's not like some kind of RPG when you just spend enough time and you will be fine. Like you will manage, you will complete all the quests, uh, right? And the only choice would be like, like some kind of dilemma. But here it's, you know, we try to make a more, something more resembling real life, right? Because uh, you are not well, powerful and you have to kind of choose your battles, right? And uh, decide this is, everything is important, but what's what's more important to me? Yes, it was. It definitely was. And uh, the thing is that it, it, it may seem like it's a text game. What could go wrong, right? It's just uh, text. But we learned it in a hard way that the text, it, it's a deceptive thing. Because if you want every scene to be consistent and uh, you have to manage so many things, uh, like different consequences have to be, they need to be written in a way that they don't contradict each other. Whatever you choose, it has to be seamless. And it's actually adds much more work than you can imagine. It's not just writing quality prose, it's much more layers. And it was a huge undertaking. And I think, I, I don't believe that we can repeat it anytime soon. So yeah, I wouldn't believe a couple of years ago that, for example, me and uh, my teammates, that we will actually create something that even more than a novel, right, in, in, in scope. It's the most amazing thing about this game.
it feels that way to us as well. It's not just text and illustrations and kind of comes to life in some strange form that we hadn't <laughs> anticipated ourselves. So we can't shake that feeling that the game kind of is alive in some sense. So uh, not everyone in, on the team actually played the uh, the whole game. I mean, all the branches and so. So it's kind of it uh, gives us surprises <laughs> ourselves sometimes. This world already exists in some other forms, so it was kind of the main step forward to us was to make something that every person on the planet <laughs> can play. Not only uh, someone who knows us personally or uh, lives in Russia, for example. I think we achieved <laughs> what what we set out to do with uh, this world and this story. So maybe we're not yet ready to say if uh, there's going to be any continuation, I mean, in the form of the chapters or something, but yeah, we, we will consider it in the future. We're actually considering some options about translations uh, in languages other than English, because the price of the professional localization can be very intimidating. We're thinking about helping fans of the game, among which there are some enthusiasts who already offered their help. So maybe we can manage this process a bit and uh, create a fan translations in different European and non-European languages, possibly. We would, would be very interested in the, also the Chinese version, for example, because yeah, a lot of Chinese players asked us about whether we would be able to do it. The amount of uh, text is huge, so it's, yeah, it's a huge undertaking. So we'll see. <laughs> Right now we are working on some other ideas which are not connected to this game in any way. Hopefully in, in the near future we will be able to announce something. But yeah, we definitely will continue experimenting with uh, narrative games and uh, role-playing games as we see them. Uh, so this is something that I think is, is the core of what we want to do. Our next game will probably be something in a similar direction, but we have a lot of ideas and hard lessons that we learned uh, doing uh, The Life and Suffering of Sir Brante. So they will, of course, influence us. Thank you.